Yeah, let's just get started. Powder is a uh, new project. Well, this is bright. A new project we started earlier this year, and um, the idea is that you can use Powder to build zero knowledge virtual machines. Um, Okay, I probably don't have to talk too much about what a zero knowledge virtual machine is uh, to this audience, but just one thing, uh, the ZK part in the ZK VM is not too important for us. Uh, we are more focused on uh, yeah, the verifiable computation aspect, so we want to have ZK VMs that generate proofs for execution of a program that are faster to verify than rerunning the execution in the first place. And uh, there are two distinctions, uh, ZK circuits and ZK VMs. And uh, yeah, ZK circuits are fixed size. The, the computation you can do is, is fixed. And in contrast, a ZK VM is uh, something, I mean, in the end, it's probably also a circuit, uh, but it's something that executes a dynamic program. So a program that has a program counter has jumps, branches, uh, memory, and so on, everything you would expect from a virtual machine. Um, and yeah, with, with a ZKVM, you can generate proofs for anything that, uh, f that runs inside the program, so no, any, any program. Um, over the past couple of months, there were many new ZKVMs created. Um, I won't read out all of them. <laughs> Uh, but uh, one thing we noticed is that they usually focus on a specific virtual machine. So the input, so they're always tailored towards a specific virtual machine, and usually they are even custom made. And um, especially this, this custom made part, uh, it has one advantage, and that is uh, probably performance. But um, I don't know if you if you have looked at uh, some uh, custom built ZKVMs, they are usually quite difficult to audit because it's it's low level code written in yeah some obscure language. Uh, once you made the design decision, it's very difficult to change that. And uh, in total, it's lots of effort to to build it in the first place, to maintain it later on. And uh, they are often uh, very specific to the proof system that is used. Of course, that again comes with performance benefits. Uh, but uh, if there is an, a new proof system, if a new proof system comes around, then it's difficult to change it over to that new system. And uh, of course, anything you did in a custom ZKVM is hard to use, reuse in a different ZKVM. So uh, if I may make that analogy, Currently, we are at a stage where uh, computer game programming was in the uh, 1980s. So the games are written for a specific machine, usually in an assembly language that is also specific to that machine. And when you want to port over that game to a different uh, type of computer, then you usually have to rewrite the whole game or at least yeah, large parts of the assembly that, uh, that the games written in. And uh, yeah, Powder wants to change that. Uh, Powder wants to be a LLVM for ZKVMs, so a system that allows you to freely change the front end, freely change the back end. You can write ZKVMs in high-level languages uh, like Rust here. And uh, it has various layers of abstraction that allows you to run optimizations um, and analysis. So yeah, Powder is a compiler stack that allows you to define ZKVM. So you actually define a virtual machine in the Powder source code, in the Powder language, you define the architecture, you define the instructions. Um, it allows you to abstract away all the low-level stuff, the low-level constraints, the com prover complexity. You can build your machines in a very modular way, and you can run automated analysis on the powder source code, like optimizations. You can, you can check for non-determinism. You can do formal verification to check whether the implementation is correct. And the, the goal is uh, 
for Parler to make it easy to build, test, and audit zero knowledge virtual machines. So this is an overview of the architecture of Parler. Um, on the left, you see uh, there are various input languages you could lose, you could, you, you could use, and on the right, uh, we currently support Halo 2, eStark, and Supernova as backends. And in the middle, you see that there are kind of two layers, the, the powder assembly layer, layer and the powder pill layer. Uh, powder assembly is an assembly-like language where you define your uh, VM architecture in. We will, we will see an example later. And um, this gets compiled down to powder pill, which is uh, very similar or an extension to polygon Hermes pill. And... Uh, the, the system allows you always to, so the, of course, when you write stuff in PIL, it is probably much more optimized, but the system allows you reach to, to reach down to the level further, to the level further down at any point, so you can always use a more uh, efficient implementation directly written in PIL if you want. And uh, Powder uh, takes care of, uh, yeah, automated witness generation for you, it runs optimization stages, and so on, you just need to select the back end and uh, it will do the rest of the job. Um, so let's start with an example. This is the, the lowest level of powder, powder pill. Uh, you might have seen that before because as I said, it's very similar to Polygon Hermes pill. Uh, we extended it in uh, several ways. For example, we allow fixed columns to be uh, directly specified in the language. So you have this uh, uh, fixed column first, which is one on the first row and zero otherwise. Um, and then you have two other columns, X and Y, which are witness columns. And this, so this is this, this table view and uh, powder with, so you don't have to, I mean, yeah, of course you don't have to write down these numbers, but uh, the, the thing is that powder, when you, when you run powder on this code, it will automatically fill out the table for you. And for the first column, this is, uh, this is obvious, you just uh, evaluate the code here, but for X and Y, it actually looks at these uh, constraints further down and will solve them for you automatically. And we can take a quick look at the actual constraints. So this uh, example implements uh, the Fibonacci series in the column Y or X, depending on how you look at it. And um, the, the first constraint here, first times Y minus one equals zero, this needs to be uh, equal to zero on, all, on every single row. So, uh, and when we take a look at the first row, we see that first is one in that row. So in order for this expression to be zero, y minus one needs to be zero. So y needs to be one. So this is, this is also how the automated uh, solver works. So uh, it can set y to, to one and the same for x on the first row. And uh, for all the other rows, these two upper constraints, uh, they are zero already just because first is zero. So uh, first is zero and then the, the uh, right factor, uh, you can just ignore it. And then uh, if you take a look at the, the two constraints at the bottom, let's just ignore this uh, one minus first prime for now. Uh, then the first constraint says uh, y prime minus, sorry, x prime minus y equals zero. So this prime symbol uh, means that you're referring not to the current row, so, but to the next row. So what it says, if we ignore the first part, it says that x on the next row equals y on the current row. So this is just, just copies over the value from one row to the next, so from y to x. And if you look at the table, this is also what happens, right? So the, the value of x is always the same as the value of y in the previous row. And uh, the second constraint, that is actually what, what defines the Fibonacci series. Uh, again, if we, if we ignore the first part, it says y on the next row equals x plus y on the current row. And this is uh, just the definition of the Fibonacci series. Cool, so this is how you define the, the low-level constraints in the powder language. And um, let's now go up one level. This is already powder assembly. It defines a virtual machine. So we, also, we already had a machine Fibonacci uh, 
on this slide, but the difference is that this is a, a constraint machine. It's not a program. It's just a list of constraints that need to be true in all, every single row. And uh, here we have a virtual machine, which, is, which has uh, a program counter. So um, in Powder, when you start out with it to define a virtual machine, it's completely empty. It, it has no predefined instructions, no predefined registers. Um, you have to, yeah, uh, declare or define all of them uh, uh, explicitly. So we started with a, a register that is called PC, and we have an annotation that says this is the program counter. And then we have a general purpose register A, and another register X, which is an assignment register. This is the, the little arrow there. Um, it's, the distinction is not important for now. And then we define an instruction that is called assert zero, and it takes an argument in X, and then inside the instruction we have constraints in the same language we've just seen. So these are just the normal, so this is just pill code. And it says X equals zero. So whenever the assert zero instruction is active, then X has to be zero. And uh, we also have a jump instruction, which takes a, an argument, a label. And uh, here again, we have uh, PC prime equals label. So whenever the jump instruction is active, then the PC on the next row is set to that label. So that's the definition of a jump. And that's how you uh, go on defining your machine. And then uh, with this function keyboard, you can start writing the actual assembly code for the machine. Uh, this is a very simple machine. It starts with assigning zero to the register A, and then it asserts that, um, yeah, this example doesn't make sense. It should say assert zero A, of course, and not assert zero zero. You've already noticed that. And that's it. Uh, so it always succeeds. Uh, there's nothing to do, but it's a nice uh, tiny example. And then, so what about more complicated things? What if you want to uh, compute a hash, for example? I mean, we could write down the hash in assembly code and just, I mean, we have, we have jumps and stuff, right? So we can just jump to a procedure that computes the hash. But that would need, that would mean that uh, all the rows, so it takes a lot of rows and they are all accounted for in this, in this main machine. Instead, you can define a specific instruction that computes the hash. And, um, and you delegate it to a submachine. So uh, this, in the second line, we say here, machine VM or, and then hasher H, which means that, the, that this machine has a reference to a submachine, which is a hasher machine. And the hash instruction links to the hash operation in the hasher machine. And then we define the hasher machine. And this is again a constraint machine. And we use uh, pill constraints to define the hash. And then, uh, so this is an abstraction depending on the back end. It will, it will be turned into a, a lookup or a recursive proof or whatever. So uh, whenever you use the hash instruction in the main machine, it will just take a single row in the main machine and then do a lookup to the submachine or a include a proof uh, or whatever you use. So the idea is if you want uh, very optimized operations that are expensive and run Often, you would implement them in a specialized uh, submachine, and the rest you would implement in assembly, um, or even in a higher level language. The, the overall compilation process uh, works that we, we just look at all the virtual machines, uh, uh, determine the links, the connections, and so on. Then we run an optimizer. So in, in certain cases, you can combine multiple uh, instructions into a single row, for example. Um, then we reduce all the virtual machines into constraint machines. So this, all this assembly code is translated into pill code. And in the end, everything is a constraint machine. So there are no registers. And uh, then we use yeah, link mechanisms to, to do the links using either lookup arguments or recursive proofs or whatever new mechanism will be developed in the future. And then we also have another optimization stage on the low-level constraints. Um, and now we can go even one level higher. So this is, yeah, 
I don't know, it's not the, the core of powder, but just as an example to validate the concept, we implemented a RISC-V front-end for powder. And uh, this allows you to translate arbitrary NoSTD Rust code here on the left to RISC-V in the middle, so this is a RISC-V assembly, and then to uh, powder assembly. Um, yeah, we, we're not working on uh, RISC-V binary code here, but instead on assembly because it allows us to do some more optimizations. And then the, um, the translation from RISC-V assembly to powder assembly is more or less a local transformation. So you see the, the addition opcode at the beginning um, is translated into, yeah, just a plus, plus, uh, and uh, a, a call to the wrap function, which wraps the value again into 32 bits. Uh, and the, the store instructions are split into two instructions uh, where we first assign the address and then execute the store. Um, that's probably not a good idea, but uh, served as a proof of concept. We will improve that later on. Um, yeah, and um, so overall, we managed to implement the, the whole RISC-V32 architecture in just 300 lines of powder assembly code. And uh, you can, the Rust code you saw on the left, you just run powder on that. Uh, powder will automatically, so it, it, it translates, that, translates that down into low level pill code and then will automatically synthesize witness generation and the constraints and so on. And uh, it just works out of the box. So it works with any Rust no OCD code. And uh, the cool thing is we can now, so we want to implement also Valida, for example, as a different uh, front end. It's, it, is a, it is an LLVM backend. So we can compare uh, whether, so the compare compiling Rust code through Valida and then through Powder with Rust code through our RISC-V front end and then to Powder. Um, and um, yeah, we also have EVM front end in preparation. Um, yeah, and that's the, the idea that you have uh, one system where you can swap out front ends and back ends and see what difference it makes. Um, plans for the future. Uh, our automated witness generation is quite slow, which is expected because it has to solve constraints. We want to allow uh, external witness generators so that you can just run a program that provides the witnesses. This has the advantage that it has to be tailored towards your code. So whenever you have to change, uh, when, whenever you change your code, you also have to change your witness generator. Um, we want to support aggregation. So um, taking chunks of the VM execution and uh, generating proofs for that. We want to further extend the polynomial language, the polynomial constraint language. We want to add a, add a proper type system, for example, and uh, yeah, add more backends. And then uh, we want to work towards a standard library so that when you want to use a hash function, a standard hash function, you don't have to rewrite it yourself, but instead you can use one from the standard library, or you can also, yeah. I mean, the idea, the idea is that one person writes it once and then we share the code. Um, yeah, the, everything is open source. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. We have a website at powder.org. Uh, please try out the examples, read the documentation. Um, yeah, contact us if you have any questions. And yeah, thanks for listening to my talk. Do we have any questions for Christian? Um, so, a lot of this looks a lot similar like languages that are just for building circuits. Um, so, I, I'm curious how, where, where you see the main differentiators to something like Circum or Vampire, which does not care about building VMs? I mean, the, the main difference to Circum is that we can build VMs with that. So there's the whole assembly language on top of it that, that, that uh, Circum does not have. Um, and Vampire, I think it also has a fixed instruction set, doesn't it? So 
I think that is that is one aspect for of Powder that is really cool that you can just really define your own instruction set. You say, oh yeah, I want to have a specified instruction just for this very weird multiplication operation or uh, whatever you 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 want to have. So I mean, the example I showed compiling from Rust that of course uses a fixed instruction set, but that is not the the I don't know the the main use case for Powder. The main use case for Powder is that you define your own instruction set. Okay, thank you. Um, just to add to that real quickly, I think that Vampire lives at a, like has a different purpose. I think it is uh, trying to represent polynomial systems in an like proof system agnostic way. So I, I, it might just live somewhere else in the stack. Yeah, we're, we're doing the same. So um, we're, oh, we're also perhaps. compiling down to polynomial systems and our proof system agnostic. Yes, but I think Vampire then is this. Uh, well, anyway, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> Are you or have you considered using something like AirScript for defining the constraints? Um, I mean, AirScript is also is more in the assembly language area, right? In, and not in the polynomial constraint. Area. AirScript is, as far as I understand, a tool to define constraints for um, starts. It should be uh, kind of compatible, but. Uh, where we don't want to mix languages too much, so. So instead, you invent your own. I mean, we just took one that already existed and extended it, right? So. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah. Thanks. Um, do you have a plan to add LLVM IR as a front end? I mean, the thing is, what what are you talking about when you say LLVM IR? I mean, you have to specify an instruction set, right? And. Uh, but it's already um, like it's uh, the intermediate representation that when you compile from C, from Rust, from uh, with uh, Silong or um, many other languages, um, they compile down to LLVM IR. So you have addition, subtractions, and everything. So you can generate yeah. proofs from this. So the I think the only reason that makes LLVM IR a little bit less suitable is that it has an unlimited number of, of registers. Um, but actually, we're trying to uh, have an alternative implement implementation of Risk Five that does not use registers, but instead uses a, just a dedicated memory machine for the registers. So that could also work for LLV LLVM IR. That's true. Yeah. Awesome. I have I have a question. Um, I should probably start asking mine first. So I don't constantly get the last question. But um, so you mentioned kind of the uh, a use case for this is that you know you can define your own VMs and you know there's the trade off that you kind of trade off against this performance, right? So and this is being the CEO of Alio, we obviously have a very opinionated stack with regards to Leo and what it compiles to and the proof system. It's very inflexible. But the reason we did that was for performance reasons. We found that for many circuits, if you tried to increase like it, offer support for multiple backends that you would end up with a much bigger circuits in many cases by having a compiler that was trying it, you basically remove optimization opportunities do you have any concrete comparison points or benchmarks between some kind of maybe very specific could even be circum or you know any any i guess like uh, opinionated uh, you know vm or opinionated language and compiler compared to like the circuits that you guys could generate out of powder i guess just to kind of quantify what the performance trade off could be I mean, so it depends on what you mean by, by performance. So we stop at the at the prover level, right? So prover performance is is not uh, well, but the circuit for us, it, but the number on the of size columns, of the circuit, yeah, they, how many gates? That's what I mean. Yeah, the number of columns. I mean, the thing is, it all depends on how you how you use powder, right? I mean, if you, it's a language, right? And uh, we, and as I said, the risk five was just an example, so I would not. Uh, want to have any benchmarks on that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's hard to answer a question here. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just the only reason I ask it because I think for the people like me in the room who are obviously very focused on implementing something and it needs to be very performant at the for the end client who's generating proofs, it would be it would be interesting to see like how an architecture like this, you know, maybe uh, is worse or better even I think depending on how a compiler is architected. I mean, this is the whole point of compilers, right? You can get like maybe optimizations that an individual uh, wouldn't have if they were writing circum. I mean, the thing is, uh, I did mention that in the talk, but we have. Uh, so, what you can also do, if you, even if you if you start from Rust, so if you do the the Rust via Risk Five pipeline, 
uh, we have a way where you can you declare a function in Rust without a function body, and then you say this is implemented with a low-level pill code machine. So you can take all the the critical stuff like hash functions, elliptic curve operations, whatever, and implement them at a very low level, uh, very much optimized, and then the kind of the the business code of your of your machine you can write it in Rust. Very cool. Uh, let's give Christian. Oh wait, we have another question in the back. Yeah. This might be a stupid question, so I apologize. Where do you think adoption is going to come for you? And what sort of infrastructure partners outside of the obvious do you think might find a lot of value in picking up powder and starting to play around with it? I mean, I, I can't predict the future, but I would assume that the first people to try out powder are researchers who want to try yeah, to, to find some, some trade-offs and want to try out some stuff. And then I hope at some point, uh, I mean, it is probably difficult to convince uh, existing, ZK, existing projects that already have a ZKVM, like uh, you're, <laughs> uh, to switch to our stack. But uh, I mean, we're, we will see. So there's always new ZKVMs popping up, I guess. Amazing. Um, thank you all very much. Let's give Christian another hand. Thanks.